Hi, welcome to Gear Garage. I'm Zach, and this is my little internet show about whitewater stuff. And in today's episode, I want to talk about catching eddies in an oar boat. And I've had a lot of requests recently to do videos about maneuvering rafts. I'm going to do a few videos about that now, knowing that, you know, rapids are all unique and they're all like a clean slate, they're their own thing, and there aren't exact techniques that always can get applied. But there's certainly some general ideas you can learn and, and, and practice and get better at to improve your rapid running ability. So these are some things I think a lot about and that I teach in our raw rowing classes. And you know, we're gonna talk about catching eddies specifically for oar boats. It's not the same as kayaks or sups or even creature crafts. It's its own kind of thing. So these are some unique techniques for catching eddies in like an oar powered boat, whether it's a raft or a cataract or I guess a creature craft, but but I, those are so unique, I'm not even gonna count those for this argument. So first I wanna give some context on running rapids in general, some things I think about a lot. To negotiate rapids, you basically are doing one of four things. Generally, to even maneuver in, a, in a, a rapid, you have to be going faster or slower than the current. Most things happen at a different speed in the current. So you're pushing downstream or you're pulling back to go slower. You can just drift. I mean, through a lot of rapids, you can just do nothing and you're fine. But if you have no speed relative to the current, you're not really maneuvering. But again, like if a log can go down a class five rapid, there's you're, you're a good chance you could just like drift down it and come out fine. Finally, for more advanced boaters, you need to use river, river features. This could mean surfing a wave across the river. This could be hitting a rock sideways and using it to spin off of it. A lot of great boaters use rocks to their advantage. So these are the four things you generally can do to, to negotiate rapids. The maneuvers you can do as a boater, they're vast, but they really kind of boil down to two main things, catching eddies and ferrying. So if you want to get better at rowing or anything in whitewater, just catch eddies all the time and just ferry, ferry, ferry. If you master these two things, rapids will all of a sudden look a lot easier to you once these two things are mastered. And these are sort of the, the baseline thing. You know, like the Karate Kid had to like wax on, wax off. Well, you need to catch eddies and ferry just over and over and over. And when we teach rowing, we're just hammering these skills over and over and over to get better. And these are the, the key foundation. But to do a lot of things, your location and momentum have to be correct. You have to be in the right place with the right angle. And, and as it gets more advanced, the right momentum. And when I say momentum, it basically means speed, but momentum is a combination of speed and mass. So the momentum of a 16 foot gear boat is a lot different than like a light, light cataract. So you need linear momentum, but also for really advanced boaters, angular momentum. Your boat is spinning a lot of the time. And so controlling that spin or using that spin to either break through a big wave or a hole or to set yourself up if you're at the top of a rapid, have angular momentum correct, you're setting yourself up for something downstream. This is pretty advanced stuff. I'm not even sure to teach how to do this other than just practicing it a lot. But again, today we're talking about catching eddies. So in, when I draw river diagrams, this is the shore here. This is a rock in the middle of the river. This is an eddy line. And let's just say for the sake of this thing, the current is going this way. So an, an eddy line is formed whenever there's current going, this, this is the bank. If the current's going by here, it's moving like this pretty fast. And what's happening is as it goes by, it's back filling this way. So the current here is generally doing that. And so there's current here, a current going back, and there, there's a shear force between the current. It's pretty crazy what's actually happening down there, but it's shearing on each other. And there's a, a distinct line where that's happening. And you have to get from here to here, you have to cross that line. And the, one of the key things about eddy, eddy lines is that they're very distinct up top. So the line is very visible, very obvious, very easy to cross up here at the top. As you get lower, it becomes a little bit less distinct and a little bit harder to cross. So it goes from being a very sharp line, you can see here, it kind of gets a little bit messy and then it doesn't even exist. And so if you're trying to cross eddies in the most effective way possible, you almost always want to catch them at the top where the line is the most distinct. And that's just a really good goal. That's basically position. Your goal is to be up here. The next part is angle. And so we're gonna take my little raptor dude, right? So if you're here, if you're parallel to the eddy line, you really can't cross it. If you ever try to catch an eddy and you're like pulling, 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 you just can't break across it very well if you're par parallel, yeah, parallel to the line. It's very hard to cross. The best way to cross it is to be perpendicular, to basically shoot across it like that. So 
our goal with catching eddies is again position here, being positioned at the top ideally, and then having an angle to the eddy line. And then finally, you need some momentum to shoot across. If you're just if you just exist here with angle, but you have no momentum, you're just going to keep moving with the current. And so you need you need to be here with some angle to the line going in this direction. So that's the general take. There's a few ways to do this. The most basic way and, and the most conservative way is to be coming down and then pull, 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 pull. And here you have a little bit of an angle to the line, but you just keep pulling and you fight and you fight and you fight and even in the eddy. That's a very conservative way to do it. There's times, depending on how strong the eddy line is, how big the eddy is, I do it like that a lot, but it just depends. Again, what, what you're doing, you're just fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and you have to break across it. And a lot of times people do this and they end up, keep they fight all the way to the bottom, but they typically get back in the eddy. Again, a very valid technique. It works, but you're kind of fighting things. My personal favorite technique, and, and it's very difficult, takes a lot of practice to get this right, is to push the boat through the eddy. And what you have to do is start out pretty far, usually in the middle of the river, and be building momentum by pushing so that you have momentum at this exact spot with an angle to the eddy line. So it takes, at this place, you have to be in this position with this angle and momentum driving you in. And if you're doing that, coming down like this and you do it perfectly, as soon as the boat crosses into the eddy, it snaps into place and stops. It's a beautiful thing when it happens, right? It feels so good. If you're a hard shell kayaker, you just know this feeling. You know you paddle in, whoop, you're in the eddy. Well, in, a, in even like an 18 foot gear boat, you can do this effectively, but it takes an incredible amount of practice and skill to do it. And so this is a pretty advanced thing and something you wanna get good at if you wanna run rapids and something to practice over and over and over. And, and the real key here is, is getting yourself it, to get all three things to match position, angle, and momentum, or position, angle, and momentum at this exact spot, which takes some practice. And what you're doing is you're shooting for whatever this is. You almost want to hit that bank. When we're teaching it, actually in rowing classes, I teach people, see if you can even hit that bank or that rock or whatever. Like your goal is to try to hit that spot. Most people can't. And most people are really afraid of that bank. They're afraid to hit it with the boat. And so they come down and they enter it down here where the line is not very distinct and they kind of fumble and they kind of make it, but they don't really feel it. And if you do 10 of these and you keep coming in here, coming in low, you don't really feel the feeling until one time you get right at the top and the boat basically spins really fast and it positioned well. And so this is something, if you're out there practicing your eddy catches, just do it over and over and over and keep trying to get closer and closer to this, this top thing with the top of the eddy. And once you do, you're gonna feel it. And then you need to do like 10, 20, 30, 100 reps on this to really dial it in. So if you're in your backyard class two, three run, just catching eddies over and over and over. And, and like I said, you, when you do it right, you'll feel it. And the cool thing when you push into an eddy like this is you push in, it snaps you around, right? And now you're looking upstream. It's a very safe place to be looking. If there's boaters behind you, you can see them come down. If there's a swimmer, you see it quickly and you can push out of the eddy and help the swimmer. And you push out the same way. You turn your boat at an angle, sorry, if I can't hear me, at an angle to the eddy line and you just push. And as soon as the bow catches some water, it's gonna pull you out and turn it downstream. And so that's pushing into an eddy. I love this technique, I use it a lot. But as the boats get bigger and heavier, this gets harder and harder to do. But in a little cap boat, I love doing this. The last method is another important skill. Sometimes you push into eddies. Sometimes you need to do what's called a downstream ferry. And a downstream ferry is really effective because the problem with pushing into eddies is you're not that strong pushing. Pushing is using your chest muscles, your triceps. Pulling is using your lats. You can use your legs. You can use your, the mass to pull back. And so you can really pull a boat backwards. So with big gear boats, this is effective or on just really important must make eddies, this works really well too. And what you do is you turn the boat backwards and you pull down, same, same idea, you pull that thing down, cross the eddy line and snap into place. And this is really hard to do because, you know, pushing you see where you're going, 
pulling, you're kind of looking over your shoulder, but you gotta keep pulling really hard and looking over your shoulder. And to get the timing right, again, to get the position, the angle, and the momentum to all happen at this exact place with looking over your shoulder is hard to do. It takes a lot of practice. But again, a super effective skill, and that's called the downstream ferry. So just to reiterate the three main methods we're using to catch eddies in an oar boat. One, just come down and just go pull, 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 and hopefully you make it in. Come down, just push in and snap in there, no problem, or turn it backwards and do a downstream ferry and do that. And, and catching eddies, like I said in the beginning, it's an important part to running rapids. A lot of rapids, the entrance is an eddy. You kind of have to catch or just get a piece of, right? Like the entrance of Blossom Bar on the Rogue, you're basically catching an eddy almost. In that, there's an eddy up there, you're, but you're using an eddy to slow yourself down to make the main move. And a lot of r r running rapids is come down like this, maybe push into this eddy, stop, then like come out here, ferry across, come down, push into this eddy, you know, leave here, come down, pull into this eddy, pull out, come down. So a lot of running rapids are just catching eddies on the way down or using eddy water. As you get better, you learn to see eddies, you learn to see where you can like almost catch an eddy and use that to slow down and make a maneuver across the river. And so that's why it's so foundational to river running. So that's a quick, some quick thoughts about catching eddies. Uh, I, I really, like I said, you can imagine I'm pretty passionate about how important this is and I'm certainly like excited about teaching it and I may have you know missed some things. So if you're an expert out there and you're like, oh, Zach, you should have mentioned this and what about this technique? Please leave a comment in the section below. You know, I'm, I'm always trying to work on my own understanding of rowing, but also my understanding of teaching. So if there's some other teaching tool out there, it'd be awesome. If you're there watching this video and you have feedback and you're like, man, Zach, you did a terrible job. You need to do a way better job of teaching. Talk slower, talk faster, enunciate your words. Just don't use this silly Lego thing. Like I love feedback too, because I'm trying to do my best, my very best to become a better teacher and get this things, these things across. And so please don't hesitate to comment and give me feedback. And um, yeah, that's all for this episode. Like I said, we'll do some more episodes on just different ways to negotiate rapids and different techniques um, coming up. Cool, see you next time, thanks.